So at its very core, it really helps us evaluate whether anything you're trading, it can be stocks, it can be futures, it can be foreign exchange, it can be anything that you're trading, whether it's inexpensive or expensive, not necessarily relative to another instrument or another stock or another future, not like we traditionally talk about relative value, but whether it's expensive or inexpensive based on where this particular instrument has been, has traded over time, and how it's traded versus its volatility, historic volatility. And where that price is, where the current price is, relative to how it's traded over the time frame that you're you're looking at. So it's a slightly different definition of expensive versus inexpensive, but it still sort of applies. You're just sort of looking at it relative to itself relative rather than relative to some other instrument, some other stock in the sector, some other metal, some other ag instrument, th that sort of stuff. Um, it is a key element in evaluating a potential trade or managing a trade. I say it's a key element because if you guys follow along with what we do on Mondays or what we talk about on Fridays or even what Jonathan t talks about on Wednesdays, um, we're looking at a convergence of our tools, right? So we don't necessarily rely on one tool to tell us exactly what to do, right? We're trying to get tools to line up because the more those tools line up, the greater the chances are that we're gonna have a successful trade. Can you use the HVT in and of itself to take trades, to manage trades, to find opportunities? Absolutely. But what we try to do here, and what is pretty consistent with the trade sheets and, and, and some of the other things that, that JR teaches, is that it's one element of a series of tools or a series of opinions that help us manage a trade, find a trade, enter a trade, exit a trade, use the trade management tools that we have. Again, at its core, what the HVT does is it's looking at and analyzing historical price movements and levels, right, relative to where we are today. So it's looking at recent moving averages and recent volatility relative to recent price movements to try to figure out exactly where we are today. And we are we at a top of a range? Are we at a bottom of a range? Is this a good place to enter? Is this a good place to take profits? Is this a good place to scalp gamma? All that, all that wonderful stuff. Um, it will also issue buy and sell signals based on a set of criteria, which we'll talk about. And so, you know, if you're rushed for time, if you don't have a lot of time to go through tons and tons of charts, and you're looking to narrow that set of potential opportunities down, there are buy and sell signals that will kick off based on a set of criteria, which are extremely helpful in either finding trades, confirming trades, or again, managing trades. And you can use this on any time frame. You can use it on a one minute chart, you can use it on a five minute chart, you can use it on an hourly, a daily, a weekly, a monthly, whatever floats your boat, this will work. It's just very important to match up the ultimate chart that you're making decisions on that's part of this confluence of tools to make sure that it coincides with your trade time frame. So if you're looking to be in a trade for a week or two, it's kind of tough to trade off the monthly. So just make sure that as you're looking at charts, as you're doing your analysis, the chart that you're looking at, the chart that you're making decisions off of relates to the time frame that that you're trading. Questions on that? Okay, well, let's walk through the, the three key components. There are three key components to the HVT. One is the midline, which is just a simple moving average. Second is the volatility bands, which are the upper bands and the lower price bands that we talk about that is based on the historical volatility over the same time frame that you're calculating the simple moving average as well as the buy signals. So those are the three components that we're gonna walk through right now and we'll talk about each of them separately. So let's talk about the first component, which is the midline, which is the blue line here. Um, uh, th this is NOV. I think I pulled this last Sunday or Monday. Most of these charts are from earlier in the week. So if they don't quite coincide to what you're looking at today, th th that's why. Um, so here you can see the blue line. What that is, kind of standard out of the box HVT tool 
is the 21 day simple moving average. And that is sort of your midline. That is your center line. That will act as support and resistance. We talked about this before that it's probably not someplace that a stock, a future, any sort of instrument you're looking at is going to stick around for long. But it is truly the, the, the simple moving average of whatever time period you pick. In this case, it's the 21 day simple moving average. And this will become the midline as we add the rest of the components. So here are the volatility bands, right? This is a three and four standard deviation channel. Again, the standard settings. So basically what the HVT tool is doing is taking that midline, taking that 21 day simple moving average, going back and with some additional calculations, computing what the standard deviation is of price with a couple twists over that time frame and then extending that standard deviation out three and four times to get the channel, right? To get a larger move than might be normally expected and a larger move than might be priced into the options. And so you can see the upper bands, you can see the lower bands, the inside bands are the three standard deviation move and the outside bands are the four st standard deviation move. So this creates a channel and this channel is very very important not only to understand how volatile the stock is and what's happened to the stock over time but also to start to say hey is this an area where we can take some action and the final component are the buy and sell signals so here you can see in the white circles that i've identified the buy and sell signals for nov going back to march so my settings are the up arrows, the buy signals are the white arrows, the sell signals are the yellow down arrows. And we'll get into this in a minute, but you can set those parameters for colors however you want. And so there's really three basic criteria that determines if a buy or sell signal is kicked off. The first is price has to move outside of these bands. So it in this case, since we have the three and four standard deviation bands, price has to move out either above the upper four standard deviation band or below the lower four standard deviation band. So that's the first criteria. Has to trade outside of the most extreme bands, in this case, the four standard deviation band. Second thing that has to happen, it has to close inside of the bands. So it has to close inside of the inside bands, the three or four, excuse me, the three standard deviation band. So it trades outside of the four, closes inside of the three. Now there's one more criteria that needs to be met in order for the buy or sell signal to kick off. And that is the bands actually have to be expanding. Volatility actually has to be picking up. So we want the upper bands and the lower bands to start separating, right? That's an indication that volatility is starting to kick up. That's an indication that direction may change, but that's also an indication of, hey, if we're looking to buy options, volatility is starting to expand, good time to buy options. So those are the three components. Questions on those three components. Is that clear, clear as mud, makes sense? Okay, cool. So we can keep going on to the next couple of slides. So all these inputs can be modified to kind of fit your eye, to fit your style of trading, to, to fit what you want to analyze, right? So all of these inputs can be modified. These are the standard inputs. In this case, the, the price is based on the close. If you guys play around with toss, there's various ways that you can calculate price. In this case, it's a 21 day simple moving average. You can change that moving average to, to fit your heart's desire. Oops, can we go back just one second? Yep, and you can also change the standard deviations, right? In this case, it's it's plus or minus three standard deviations and plus or minus four standard deviations. If you want to tighten them up, if you want to expand them, whatever works for you can be modified in the tool. And finally, if for whatever reason you don't like a simple moving average, right, TOS has, in this case, you know, a half dozen or a dozen different ways to calculate moving average, and you can modify that also. So basically all the inputs 
can be modified to your heart's content, again, to fit your liking, to fit your eye, to fit your style of trading. And on the next slide, you can see that the appearance of any of these elements can be changed, right? The midline, the lower bands, the upper bands, the signal down, which is the sell signal, the signal up, which is the buy signal. Right, so you can change the color, you can change the width, you can change whether you want a solid line or a dotted line, and you can do that across all the elements. Again, to fit your eye, to fit the way you wanna look at the chart.